Okay. All right. Take it All away, right. Mary. Thank you, You're Mary. Welcome. Well, and thank you for inviting me to be a part of the occasion and our conversation. And everyone out there should know that Mary and I have been talking and we just decided, well, let's have this conversation with you all. So thank you. And uh, welcome to my Albuquerque, New Mexico studio. And uh, we're going to take a tour and it's going to go by rather quickly. And uh, so you should know that my career has been very long and very diverse. Um, there's a lot of media that's involved that I've been working with over the years. And so the, two, the studio tour is gonna to be a little condensed, but if you have any questions, we're gonna be here for questioning and answers. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can find me on my website and social media if you have any other interest in pursuing what I do. So um, just quickly, my work is um, really about landscapes, whether they're external or internal. And a lot of the work is inspired by my travels and uh, by my artist residencies, because the sense of place, the color of place, and the connectivity between all of us globally, not only with nature, but with each other is very important to my work. So I want to tell you that my husband, David Vogel volunteered. Uh, actually, we volunteered him, didn't we? <laughs> Yay, David! <laughs> so he's going to be uh, recording this in video. So um, there may be uh, a little informality about the technique, but just bear with us and I think we'll have a good time. Yep. So it's time to see my factory here and I call it a factory because um, we do a lot of different things and we have a good time. So um, going to let David catch up with us a little bit here. Um, I think we should start in the other room. Uh, Let's walk there as though we're good. walking into the studio. Yay. And while we're doing that, I just want to interject that I don't take the time to uh, do a biography introduction because you all get the newsletter and on the newsletter or the Creatives of Conversation page, you've seen the biography that Marietta gave me as well as there's the blog post review that I wrote. So be sure and take a look at those if you have it to learn more about Marietta and her art. Yes, and I should mention that Marietta's blog post is a piece of prose. It's like poetry. Mm -hmm. I've never had my work described in quite that way. So I was thrilled to read it. So I hope you get a chance to read it too. Well, I was fortunate enough to get to see this amazing studio and talk to Marietta in person before I wrote the blog post review. So I was getting some insights into what she does. So here we have what you would enter into this room and it has a lot of storage. And as you might know, some of you that are art makers is that um, it's the nemesis of every artist. So we try to design it. And of course we've outgrown it a little bit, but we keep rearranging it. So storage is very important. And that's what you're looking at now. And then we have flat storage, which means paper pieces that are put into files. And this is something that I had uh, placed because we had a group of people here the other night and we were talking about different things about the intentions of my work. Oh, oh okay. Mary, Mary thinks that I should point to it. So we're talking about environment. Thank you, Mary, for the prompt. Sense of place, color of place, and we already talked about internal and external uh, uh, landscapes and connectivity, which is very important to me. And then you see that we do have some wall space in here for some of the work of uh, previous work or other work I've done. This work, I should tell you, evolved when I was in, maybe you can show the edges, David. I was in Crater Lake. Uh, Oregon doing a artist residency and they had a deep blue, well Crater Lake is the deepest bluest lake in uh, North America 
you have to tilt it down a little bit, I think, David. And uh, so I would fall into the lake, not literally, but visually, emotionally, every single day. And that dark blue, rich lake really started to make such an impact on my work. But in the beginning of that cycle, I still kept edges. I wasn't ready. It got reductive, but not completely minimal. And the edges represented what was going on around the lake. This is uh, as the lake starts going shallow and toward the edges, it gets more aqua. And what I love too is your, your oil actually comes off of the canvas, off the it edge does. there. Does. Um, so actually into our space um, as if we're invited in. Right. To the, yeah. right. It just spills out. It's kind of like an open composition as they would say in Art 101, where it extends out. Yes. Yeah, nice. And so um, David, if you kind of show this view, one of the things when I built this studio was I was determined to have windows because a lot of my other studios uh, were more focused on wall space. And sometimes I regret giving up wall space, but I wanted that connection to the outdoors. I didn't want to feel like I was in a closet. And so, you do have this beautiful courtyard area right outside. Uh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. So you just see some of the older work and windows. And here's a calendar that's kind of uh, not too busy this year. We still had a lot of cancellations, postponements, and whatever. And that's continuing. And we should probably get into the big room. Hey, let's go, everybody. We're going in the big room. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a studio tour. <laughs> so let me see. Uh, in here, you can see um, some work also. And this type of work I call sculptural paintings. So this uh, happened after I had a year of bipolar. We went to both uh, the uh, uh, Arctic circle and to the uh, South Pole. And my work was very in influenced by the melting ice and the environment challenges, but also the beauty. When we went to the Antarctic, that pristine primal beauty was just astounding. And I think that if you go there, you really understand wanting to preserve some place that represents our beginnings, how it would be if people didn't get engaged. And I probably should mention that you don't see people in my work because I always feel that the viewer is the person in my work and how you engage with my work is that connection between person and the art. Did you want to show them actually your installation up here? Of the, I will. Oh, oh the yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. And I just wanted to show you first a little sculpture. And this is a beeswax sculpture. And it represents uh, the residency I had in Northern Thailand where everyone wrapped their foods so beautifully and so elegantly. And so this little uh, beeswax sculpture is one of, I think 12 or so representing different types of wrapped food. And uh, David's backing up so I can show you the mess. Here's the busy stuff. And in this studio, I decided to put all my supplies in a closet so they weren't out cluttering. Yeah, and have you noticed, that's a great idea. Have you noticed that that makes a difference in your creative process to not have the clutter of everything oh, around yes. you. Yes, that's why I determined that. Although, as you say that, I'm looking at the clutter on this table. Well, it's a lot of art, though. <laughs> it's happening over it's there. It's a lot of art. So um, let me see. Here's a video also from Northern Thailand. And uh, I think uh, two or three of my exhibits have included photography and videos. And now, David, if you would please, we can show them these ice cubes. Oh, so can this I ask a question? I'm sorry, I'm about your video, though, here. 
So this is art that you made and turned it into a video? No, it's oh. actually the leap. Oh. <laughs> and it was a part of a series called Green oh. that started in, in Northern Thailand. But it's, and it's reductive as all my work is, but you do can watch a little ant crawling around. Oh, nice. So you kind of have to move into the work. Um, which is true with a lot of my work. It's contemplative and it's made to draw you in. So that's some of the ice that's melting. And there are actually 18 of these pieces now. And they've been in many different configurations. And I guess I should mention that my work can be displayed in many different ways. I just love, I mean, I love them all, but Marietta, this one speaks to me so much because I am concerned about the earth and the mm -hmm. ice, but the way that you use the colors and the different cube shapes, I mean, in our world, how much ice do we really, maybe in the winter, but we think about ice cubes, you know, you know or whatever, but then you have them with the different melting shapes and the different colors to really have us think about ice in our lives. Mm. So it's beautiful. I'm really impressed with uh, how Marietta also uses space and puts together her installations, her exhibitions, mm. and places them. Yes. So, yeah. So um, thank you. You're welcome. That was a nice observation. Uh, here you're seeing very quickly an accordion book. This one's called Tides. It's from an island that I was on doing a residency in. Uh, uh, Greece, and we really need to pay attention to the ties. And I like accordion books because I can fold them up and I can travel with them and make art with them. So, and then I like to display them because you can stretch them out or close them up. And just to mention, let me see, um, the book pausing of poems that was mentioned earlier. Um, and it's still available on Amazon. But just to let you know that not only do I travel, but I also do artist residencies. And they're really important to me because they draw me away from the busyness of being an artist where I can really just focus on my work. And this book is because I went to an artist residency on the foundation and estate of Morris Graves in California. And it was just so beautiful to be there because they didn't allow any electronics and I could just be and make my work. So it was just every moment was precious because I was able to take the time to observe it. So this poem is called A Secret Place. Tucked away from all the noise and fright, a bowl of water and a stand of trees hidden from today's light roar, secretive, quiet, holding its breath, not to be found out and spoiled. And it is a very private place. When I applied, my husband David kept trying to find it on the map because he wanted to know where I was going. And Google has no record of it. Oh, wow. So that's the Morris Grave Foundation. Oh, yeah. beautiful poem. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And, um, oh, you can look at the crate. And this is quite a, a big crate. It's, and I like all the stamps on it. This is not my art, but I like it because um, maybe it should be. Um, it has all the stamps of how it traveled to Italy during the um, 2019 biennial. And the piece that was shown there was, uh, I have a picture to show you because it's a very tall piece and it's um, uh, 60 feet of Tyvek, but it's folded over so it hung 17 feet. And uh, that's what's in the crate. It's rolled up and uh, it's kind of neatly nesting in there. And that's, there's a beautiful picture of it with Marietta standing in front of it on her, her web uh, homepage on her website. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great, picture so be Thank sure you. to check out her website and it's linked uh, many times on the newsletters I sent out as well as the creatives and conversation and the, the blog post review you can find it good and um, let's see 
Now we have some work laid out on the table and uh, I'll just show you quickly. And again, from my travels, these are uh, watercolors. And um, I think I posted on um, Instagram that there are 18 of these pieces in different configurations. And these were done on the island Flores, Portugal. And uh, uh, every day, the, I would just look out at the water and record what I was seeing at that moment. That's the Atlantic Ocean. The island is four hours from Boston in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, I know. Fabulous. It was. It was a great experience. And here we have some of my wood sculptures. And um, I do this a great deal. And in fact, my next poetry book, which will be published this year, and Mary wrote a lovely little blog for it. It's a great about, book. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so we're slowly getting it together and it will be together. And that has to do with trees and the book will be art and uh, poetry about trees. And uh, let me see. It's called Ingrained. Yes. And that's a picture of some of the art that is touring about trees. And so there's paintings, there's videos, there's prints. And I was mentioning to Mary the other day that some of the diversity of my work that occurs in one exhibit is because I think people respond to different things. Some may like the videos and some respond to the photographs on silk and it enables me to engage everybody. So um, I do have a poem that I want to read you from this book. It actually has been published before, but it was so timely to be in this book. And so... Five minutes. Oh, okay, pardon me. Go ahead. So this is, um, Oh majestic tree, how safe I feel hugging your stable trunk. Although you tower over me, you protect my soul from unbelieving. You protect my soul from unbelieving. Trees are very important to me. So David, you say that we're five minutes to go? No, we can because we started. We can get a half hour until we start. Okay. So uh, this is a good example of when the edges fell off and my paintings became more minimal because I really wanted people to experience the blueness. And I even made the frames of birch that are receding so the painting comes out into the viewer's space and you can interact with it. So that's, oh, I have to tell you though, how frightening the idea was not to have edges. And what happened was I just got the courage one day and I said, okay, they're going, here we go. I'm gonna go into the abyss. And I did it and nothing bad happened. In <laughs> fact, it was very good. So a lot of my paintings are done like this now. And I think then we should jump over. Oh, I do wanna show this one other piece I'm gonna walk by the David because this is of a series that I have done in Iceland. So this is just one of these pieces and they are rounded like this because after I was there for a couple of days, I realized that something was different and I put my finger on it and it was that the island really doesn't have trees. They, the trees were all cut down early when the Vikings came because they needed it for fire and housing. And so when you drive, you actually look at the horizon. You look at the roundness of our planet and it's quite astounding. And it's burnished gratified because it's like the volcanic island. And that's part of the reason why they're having trouble replanting those trees. So I want to jump over here to more work that was done in 2021 because that was a whole different aspect for all of us. And this black work, I, I uh, 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 
black quite a bit because it really intrigues me. And I was afraid of the dark when I was a kid. So it's exploring it, getting friendly with it. And my residency in Iceland was in the winter, 24 hours a day dark. So I wanted this matte darkness that you felt was the void, that you were moving into the void. But then as I started working with it, I wanted to put uh, copper edges that reflected on the wall because I started to think that the light and the limbing of the light around the black would be very important. That it was the beginning of the pandemic and it was just too dark, but I thought there was going to be light. So I wanted to add the light. And then let's just talk about the bowls for a minute. David, watch the wire. And Barry and I were sitting in front of these, so you got an opportunity to see them. And it had been an idea that I was working with and thinking about for a while. And the shapes, they're painted on both sides. And sometimes, let's see. So both sides are painted. And I tried to paint them earth colors. And then the concave part, I wanted the viewer to be able to move into and be part of the work. And they're different colors because they're different moods and different times. And um, they can be an installation or I've imagined them as so much of my work gets changed with every venue. So they could go in many different ways or just hang by themselves. And lastly, this group of work, which I call, as I almost hit that wire, I call this the other side of numbness. And I did this in the beginning of this year when we finally got vaccines. And I felt like, oh, this is black ink, India. Ink. And I just felt like we were breaking loose again. I don't know about today, we're having a little situation again, but at this point, I felt breaking loose. And again, this circular looks like I'm breaking out of the virus. And that's what it felt like, like there was going to be freedom. And this one, I felt like we were getting more solid again and things were clearing up and I felt grounded again. And I just had another residency canceled for September in Alabama because of the new upsurge. So I don't know what's going to happen, if I feel so solid or not, but I bet a lot of you have been having these experiences and these feelings and this unsettledness, the unknowingness. And I guess all of this work that's been done in the past pandemic era, and I have a lot of poems about the pandemic, is um, the unknowingness. We just don't know what, how it's all going to unfold. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a quick tour. I think I went through a lot of eras here and we're open for questions. Yeah, well, and just I'm going to ask something and then we'll we'll do that. Um, we can stop recording and then open it for Q&A. But as those of you know who read the blog post review, um, I am very captivated by the meditative um, aspect of each one of your works, like the installation, for example, of all the the uh, round ones to make us think of the curves of the earth that we were sitting in front of. You can look at one of them for a long time, or you can look at the entire installation. Um, and then, as you said, the black, saturated black that you have, see how, you know, uh, unreflected, I think you said black. Right. Movie. So it and, felt like boy. Yeah, and relating yeah. that to you were in Iceland and it was also a pandemic and everything was too dark. There mm -hmm. wasn't, you know, very interesting how you said that. So I just wanted to ask you, uh, before we break into the question and answers, um, uh, this, this connectivity that makes us, you also do a really interesting thing with space. So 
to think about the space between the way you put things, the space inside the earth with the bowl, you know, the bowl shape um, and the edges and the way that you do things. Uh, what, would, what, what is it that um, is a motivating, I know you love, you really love the earth and want to meditate on aspects of the earth, but I haven't seen quite the way that we can really focus and meditate on the earth with things that are seemingly non-representational of the earth. So I don't know, did you want to maybe respond to well, that? I think that one thing is the colors. Mm -hmm. And for me, color is so important because it evokes memories, it evokes sense of place. And I think uh, this is when I've had exhibits where like in Finland or in Latvia, and I'm doing work that represents the colors that they see all the time, you know, they identify it and it brings up those feelings. Oh. And if it's some place that you like blue, it can be sky, it can be water, but people really respond from that place. Oh, and okay. you mentioned, well, cool. I heard, I don't know if you mentioned, it like, could be the way I'm hearing, but. Uh, one of the things about my work is that I really place a value on beauty because I think uh, we need beauty. We absolutely do. And there's a lot of beauty surrounding us that we might focus on. And I think that beauty draws people in. It's kind of seductive mm -hmm. and it draws people in and I hope they're drawn into my work. And then you can kind of contemplate the work once you're inside of it, mm. once you're in there. So Ooh, that's yes. nice. Yes. That's nice. You're drawn in by the beauty. And I think also the kind of the uniqueness of what you're doing. There's a there's a question there that that captivates us too. It's beautiful and, and it's like, what's what's what is what is this, you know? And and then you start to think about the earth and how it's probably not a, a just a, a you know perfect circle mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. the it's ice wobbling, right? yeah. yeah and yes. the ice or what the black and white means and how it's placed mm -hmm. so wonderful and i was just thinking as you said that too and some of your guests might know that your daughter elaine does these wonderful uh, santa fe art tours and she really helps people to focus and see and contemplate and move into the art that they're looking at. And now you're doing some of those mm -hmm. tours. So I think that's really heartfelt. I think that's wonderful. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. They're fun. Yeah. Okay. So All right. now should we open it up? Yeah, yeah. And I'm so I'm going to stop recording now for the Q&A. Um, so here we go. Stop recording.